in the ridden horse, several muscles and structures play important roles in supporting the rider's weight, facilitating movement and maintaining balance. The spinalis muscle is located on either side of the horse's vertebral column. Its function is to provide stability and support to the spine during movement. It helps to maintain the horse's posture and balance while carrying a rider's weight. Longissimus is situated alongside the horse's vertebral column also and runs from the pole or atlas region to the sacrum. Note the connection with the sacrum and how the fascia and underlying muscles make a fan-shaped base and how much this structure is involved in lifting the withers through the spine. This is why a well-developed top-line musculature is critical for ridden horses to support and protect the spine. Longissimus plays a crucial role in supporting the rider's weight and assists in maintaining the horse's balance and posture, like spinalis, particularly during lateral movements and collection. In well-trained and developed horses, it can be up to 10 centimetres thick. Latissimus dorsi is a broad, flat muscle located on the horse's back and sides. It originates from the thoracic and lumbar vertebrae and attaches to the upper arm bone, or the humerus, just below the scapular bone. The primary function is to move the horse's shoulder joint. It helps in extending and adducting the forelimb, contributing to the horse's forward movement and supporting the rider's weight. The most striking element of this muscle is how it attaches to the wither vertebrae in four strong, thin straps quite unlike tendons, more like fascia, also known as an aponeurosis. The scapular cartilage is a thin, flexible strip in the wither region and allows for smooth and coordinated movement of the forelimb. The scapula and its cartilage helps to absorb and distribute the forces generated during locomotion, thereby providing stability and facilitating efficient movement. The saddle tree points, stirrup bar and girth attachment are sited close to the rotating scapular cartilage. English saddles are designed and fitted to avoid the scapula and its cartilage, approximately five centimetres behind the scapular cartilage, but this can be an inaccurate location as the cartilage can extend five centimetres beyond the scapular bone to contact the tree points when it is rotating. The sacroiliac joint is located between the sacrum, which is the fused triangular bone at the base of the spine, and the ilium, which is part of the pelvis. It plays a crucial role in transferring the forces generated by the hind limbs to the horse's back and forelimbs as the leg takes weight during the stance phase of the stride. The sacroiliac joint allows for slight movement and flexibility, absorbing the impact and providing stability during locomotion and when carrying a rider. An efficient, coordinated posture in both horse and rider is important for the horse's back function to prevent strain in this region. Strain of this joint is linked with suspensory ligament issues in the hind limbs. Both can often fail together. If the saddle and rider place uneven pressure on the horse's back, this can create excessive stress on the sacroiliac joint via a tense hollow back. And this can lead to inflammation, discomfort and potential long-term issues such as sacroiliac joint dysfunction or pain. In response to discomfort and poor balance, horses may develop compensatory movement patterns and muscle imbalances. They might brace against the saddle or adopt unnatural postures to alleviate pain or imbalance. Over time, these compensations can lead to muscle stiffness, asymmetry and further discomfort in more remote regions. A saddle that interferes with the horse's shoulder movement 
can restrict the proper function of the latissimus dorsi muscle and scapular cartilage. This restriction can limit the horse's ability to extend and adduct the forelimbs, leading to reduced stride length, decreased range of motion and compromised movement efficiency. To mitigate these issues, proper saddle fit checks are essential and riders should focus on improving their riding skills through proper stability and synchrony, core strength and conditioning exercises. Atrophy of the spinalis, longissimus and latissimus dorsi muscles, meaning they become weakened and reduced in size due to saddle fit issues and rider loading deficits, can have detrimental effects on the horse's movement. The horse's ability to engage its hind end and push off effectively can become compromised, resulting in reduced impulsion and hind limb engagement. Atrophied muscles can limit the horse's range of motion and flexibility, particularly in lateral movements. The loss of muscle support in the back can affect the horse's ability to carry the rider's weight effectively and maintain balance during movement. Muscle atrophy can cause altered, compensatory movement patterns and imbalances of gait patterns. As specific muscles weaken, other muscles may become overactive or hypertrophied to compensate. These imbalances can lead to uneven movement, stiffness and an asymmetrical posture, negatively affecting the horse's overall movement quality, fluency and symmetry. Most importantly, weakened and atrophied muscles are more prone to strain, sprain and other musculoskeletal injuries. The lack of muscle support and stability can put additional stress on the horse's joints, tendons and ligaments, increasing the risk of injuries during physical exertion or demanding movements. Reversing muscle atrophy requires a systematic rehabilitation program that includes proper conditioning mobilisation exercises, targeted muscle strengthening and a well-fitting saddle. Ideally, and depending on the extent of the atrophy or stability and synchrony of the rider when loading the horse's back, the horse would be worked from the ground until a normal wither lift action, which indicates unrestricted thoracic sling engagement, is restored.